<laughs> hey, what is going on everyone? It's me, Mr. Mario, and in this video here, I'm going to be showing you all if you have a jailbroken PlayStation 3 running custom firmware, how you can use the latest EvoNAT PEX custom firmware in order to convert from a retail CEX or KEX console over to a development or debug DEX or DEX console. Now, do keep in mind this is going to be for jailbroken PS3s that are running full custom firmware, and this is going to allow for most of the options. However, it's not going to completely flip the hardware to a development board or system. By that, I mean some of the stuff like, for example, HDCP, that's still going to be enabled at a hardware level, even though it is a retail system running a DEX firmware. So that's just going to note that there. However, this is useful if you are running anything or would like to run anything that does require DEX or debug or development environments or firmware of some kind. Really, if you're trying to do any real-time editing, any type of development, or really if there's, again, any software or modifications out there that do require DEX, this could work. Now, I have made a video prior covering this same procedure using Rebug firmware. However, I'm going to be covering this using EvoNAT firmware because EvoNAT is now the newer firmware that is updated these days, and we do have a nice breakthrough with PEX. For those who aren't very familiar with the terminology, it's all good. Like I said, CEX is going to be for a retail system or firmware, I should say. DEX will be for your development firmware. And then these ones here, PEX and DPEX, the P here stands for ported. Now what EvoNet has done is he has taken the development modules and such from 4.84, which was the latest which was available, and has ported them onto higher firmwares, such as 4.90, hence why this is called ported or PEX. Now PEX is going to run like a CEX firmware with the developer options there, and DPEX is going to run like a DEX firmware with, again, the updated and ported over development options. Also, if you're coming from the older Rebug firmwares, it's easier to think of this like PEX is kind of the common day equivalent of Rex firmware, and DPEX is the common day equivalent of DREX, if that helps at all. Now with all that out of the way, we're going to need a few things if you are wanting to continue on here. Of course, we will need our jailbroken PlayStation 3 running custom firmware, and it will need to run the latest EvoNAT custom firmware. Now this system is currently running EvoNAT 4.90 just fine, However, we're going to need the PEX variant here. Now, when you're installing this custom firmware initially and jailbreaking your PS3, you have the option to choose either CEX or PEX firmware. Now, we can check real quick whether you need to do an update here. If you navigate over to Custom Firmware Tools and check in here, you're going to see many different options, but you should find an option which is CEX to DEX. If you see that on your system, you do not need to perform a firmware update or install. However, if you're running EvoNAT custom firmware and you don't see that here, you are going to need to install PEX, and I'll show you how to do that. This step here also applies to anyone who is not on EvoNAT, or you might be on an older EvoNAT custom firmware which does not have development options on here. With that being said, go ahead, grab a USB drive, move over to your computer, and we're going to get that firmware update. I'll have a couple links down below in the description, but one of them is going to be for the latest version of EvoNAT custom firmware, which has a PEX variant. Now, I would recommend, of course, reading through all of this here, checking out all the lovely options and everything that has been done on this firmware, but you are going to want to look for the downloads here and this is what we can find. So, for example, if you checked those firmware options and you did not see CEX to DEX, that means you're running a CEX-based firmware. This is what we're going to need. We're going to need the PEX variant that works on CEX systems. So from here, you can go ahead, select this, but you can also choose whichever variant you might want. 
No BD is if you have a broken Blu-ray drive or no Blu-ray drive. No BT is if you have a broken Bluetooth board or no Bluetooth board. No BD and no BT is for both of them. And OC is going to be the overclocked variant. I'm just going to go with the standard one here since everything works on this system I'm using and I have no interest in overclocking it. Just go ahead and click on the download link for whichever firmware you're wanting and then save it somewhere you can easily find it. Next, I would also recommend checking the MD5 hash when we download this and copy it all over. So you can use whichever program you'd like to do this. I'm going to be using MD5 Checker. If you also need something to extract the archive that we download, I would recommend using 7-Zip. It's free and easy enough to use. With our USB drive plugged in, of course, since this is a PS3, we are going to need to make sure this USB drive has been formatted to the FAT32 file system and is set to MBR, not GPT. If you have a PS3 and you've used it extensively or even a bit at this point, you should be familiar with this here. If you need to format it, you can go ahead and do that as well, but I don't have anything I'm really worried about on this file system and this USB drive. So for this here, I'm actually going to go in. I'm going to delete the old firmware update I have on here, so just clear that out and let's go ahead and put the new one on the drive. So for this here, let's extract our PEX firmware. You can right click on this and extract it if you're using 7-zip into its own folder. And we can do the exact same thing for MD5 checker. Now with the PEX firmware extracted, we can open up the folder and you should see a few things here for the PS3 folder, as well as a readme, an MD5 hash and links if it's all included on here. For this, within the PS3 folder, this should already hopefully be built out, but you should have a PS3 folder, an update folder within that, and the ps 3 updatepup file. Since this is all built out, I'm just going to right click and copy out the PS3 folder here. Now on my USB drive, I'm just going to paste it right onto the root. And with that copied over, we should be all good. Now go back to your firmware folder and look for the MD5 hash which is available here. It should bring up something like this. We can just highlight this and copy out this random assortment of characters. Close out of this, close out of this, and now we're going to open up MD5 Checker. Open up the folder that you've extracted and open up the MD5 Checker executable if this is what you're using. Now right here, we're going to need to navigate to our USB drive and within the USB drive itself, not where we downloaded the firmware, but in the USB drive where we copied it to, Go into PS3, update, grab the PS3 updat file, drag and drop it onto MD5 checker, and let it verify. Once it generates a MD5 hash, double click this, paste in the MD5 hash you had, and it should say same. If it says same, then we're all good, we've copied this over successfully, the file doesn't seem to be corrupt. So we can close out of this, close out of MD5 checker, right click on the USB drive, and eject it, now take it over to the PS3 if you need to update your system. With our USB drive inserted, and you can check it by scrolling over to any of the media options and finding it here, go over to Settings, System Update, Update via Storage Media, and as you can see, it should find the PEX variant of our firmware. This is exactly what we need. So we can hit OK, and we're just going to install this like any other update. Go through the process here, and start. It's now going to, of course, copy over the firmware update to the system itself, then reboot and install. Once your console reboots, it should bring you to this system update screen. Just let it check and then finish the install itself. It's going to go through the process that you've probably seen before for any other firmware update. Just let it complete and reboot yet again. Awesome. Now that our system has rebooted, we can now unplug the USB drive from the console. And we can navigate over to Network, Custom Firmware Tools, and you should now see a CEX to DEX tools option. If you see this, you're in the right place. This is exactly where we need to be. So now let's work on getting this converted over. We can navigate into CEX to DEX tools, and I just want you all to take a look at this here. Scroll down to the bottom, and you can check show information. Now in the top right corner, we're going to see all of our information, our firmware, LV2 kernel, target ID, everything on here. You're going to see that most of it is CEX and we're going to start changing this over. So to do this, we can now back out of this and we're going to go over to dump tools. Navigate down and we're going to find dump ERK for the EID root key. Go ahead, run this.
There we go. Once it confirms that ERK has been dumped, we are good to continue. Go back, go down to CEX to DEX tools, scroll up, and we're going to convert to DEX. As long as you understand this warning here, you can continue on and let it reboot. Now check this out. When your system reboots, in the bottom right hand corner, you should see some host name connected from and IP address information. And if you see that there, congratulations, that is a sure sign that we are in DEX mode here, that we've been able to convert this. So this is technically a PEX firmware that we are now running in DPEX mode, you can say. We can come back over to network, go up to custom firmware tools, go down to CEX to DEX tools, scroll all the way down to show information, and check this out. Pretty much everything is running in CEX mode, except for two more options, which we're going to change up. First of all, let's change the LV2 kernel, or level 2 kernel. Scroll up here, and we're going to select swap kernel. As long as you understand this and you're okay with it, continue on and it will now reboot yet again. There we go, we are almost done. You can go back over to Network, Custom Firmware Tools, CEX to DEX Tools, and check the information. Now the last thing is going to be Debug Settings. For this, it's going to be about the same as before. Scroll up here, find Toggle Debug Settings, and there we go. That should be enabled, so we can now physically reboot our system to apply these changes. So I'm just going to come over here, turn off the system, or actually, what am I doing? I could just do this from network. Go up here, power options, and let's just do a hard reboot. We've now rebooted our system yet again, and if we come over to network, custom firmware tools, and CEX to DEX tools, check the information, check that out. Everything is running in DEX mode. So congratulations, you have now converted over your system and done the CEX to DEX conversion. So now your system is running as a DPEX firmware. Keep that in mind in case you ever want to update while running your system in DEX mode. It is worth noting, if you choose to keep your console in DEX mode completely, that is totally up to you. However, when new firmware updates come out, you are going to need to install the DPEX variant. I will show you this. If you scroll down here, let's say new firmware update comes out, you're going to want to download the latest DPEX available because your console is currently in DEX mode. You don't want to download the version which just says DEX. This is going to be for mostly consoles that really are actually development systems, but since you still have a retail system that's been converted, again, if it's running in DEX mode, you're going to want the DPEX update. Just keep that in mind. Just like any other update, you would download and extract DPEX and it will look a little something like this. It's going to look about the same. So you're just going to need, again, that PS3 update file, and you're going to need to copy it into the proper folder structure on your USB drive right here. I won't bore you with those details because we just went over how to install firmware updates, but it's going to be the same process. Now for the last bit here, I'm going to show you how to convert back over to CEX. Let's say the debug or development environment just wasn't for you. Maybe you relied on certain things that just didn't work under DEX mode, or maybe you just don't like it for whatever reason. That's fine, we can convert back over pretty easily. For this, we can navigate over to our network column and custom firmware tools. And we can go over to dump tools here if you need to dump your ERK for whatever reason or your EID root key. I know mine is on the hard drive here, but just in case you don't have it on your hard drive, like you've swapped hard drives for whatever reason, you can go ahead and dump this if you need to. With that dumped, we can go back, now go to CEX to DEX, and this time we're going to hit Convert to CEX. As long as we agree here, continue on, and let it reboot. Once the system restarts, we can scroll back over to our Network column, Custom Firmware Tools, CEX to DEX, and check the Show Information area. Now, as you can see here, actually almost everything is CEX aside from the debug settings and VSH is set to DEX, but I'm actually going to keep that DEX just because it was already like that when we were running in CEX mode. So for this, we don't have to worry about swapping the kernel. We just have to change debug settings. So that does save us one step here. 
but to change the debug settings, we can come over here to toggle debug settings. Make sure that is enabled there. So we have CEX debug settings enabled. Now we can go back, actually go back up here, did it again, and we're going to do a hard reboot. Once your system has rebooted, we can go back over to the custom firmware tools, CEX to DEX, and show information. And as you can see, we're back where we started. So congratulations, I've shown you all how to convert over to a development system and convert it back over to a retail system. So you now have the option to choose however you want to do it. I do want to give a big shout out and thank you to EvilNat for developing this custom firmware here, working on the porting of all of this and really just making it so much easier here. I mean, this is simple to do and it's pretty similar to the Rebug firmware with Rebug Toolbox, but this is even cooler because we're able to do it all within the actual XMB itself. We don't need a separate application to do it, so it's just cool having that experience. Either way, that is about it for this video here. I hope you all enjoyed it. If it helped, a like would absolutely be appreciated. If you didn't like it, a dislike is fine as well too. But with all that being said, this is Mr. Mario signing off. Thank you all for watching, everyone.